Hey there, we are live. Hi, 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 hello. Uh, medyo dark ang ating video ngayon. <laughs> Dahil we, ha- we are in a different place, so that's why it's, it's a little bit dark. But hello, uh, good evening. This is episode 31, I think. <laughs> This is episode 31 of Freedom in Freelancing Live. So I am happy that you're joining us tonight and I cannot anymore announce, what do you call that? I cannot anymore announce on chat because I'm having a hard time with it. But regardless, hello, we are here. Um, yun nga, um, medyo, medyo madilim, no? We don't really have much of a choice because the light is dito lang and then my light dun sa likod na very light, light na very light. Um, yeah. So, okay lang yun. Show must go on. So, tonight we're going to talk about why is it that in for other people, it's very easy to break 100k months. Or it's very easy for other people to charge high. Tapos sa iba, it's very hard. Right? So, we have people and that it's very easy for them to charge high. Like, for when it's... For me, right now, it's very easy for me to charge high. But it didn't really start like that. You know, yung, when back when I was still starting out as a freelancer, it wasn't really like that for me. So it was just very recently that I was very comfortable with charging high because I had to make it worth my time. So for other people, it's also very difficult because there's this thing that we call money mindset. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So one of the things that is very important when you are a freelancer and when you are charging high is your mindset about money. I'll be sharing a lot of stories tonight. I have a lot of money mindset stories with you because I was also struggling in this part when I was starting out. So I'm super excited. I have a lot of good stories to tell you. All right. So this one tonight is Super exciting because I now have things to show to you. And before we start, I just like to let you know that our enrollment for Create and Rise Academy, since we're receiving a ton of questions about it, I don't even know why. <laughs> so since we're receiving a lot of questions about Create and Rise Academy, let me just tell you that the academy is going to open in April 1 to 4. Um, there has been a quick meeting that we're going to do it. Medyo, medyo bright ba? <laughs> There has been a quick meeting that we're going to do it April 1 to 6. But we'll let you know when we are already there. So we'll cross the bridge when we get there. <laughs> right? So we're reopening uh, for Batch Echo, letter E already. This is our fifth open enrollment. And we're super excited to meet the new members of the family for Batch Echo. Uh, again, if you do not know anything about Create and Rise Academy, just go to www.createandriseacademy.com forward slash FAQs with letter S. So that's frequently asked questions. So just go to www.forwardslashcreateandriseacademy.com, sorry, forward slash FAQs, okay? So just make sure you go there if you have a lot of questions you can see. Um, a lot of questions being answered there already. And of course, if my questions na kayo at very, this very early part of the video or if this of this live training, let me know in the comment section so I can answer them later. Okay? So if you have questions, clarifications, type them in. Do not hesitate so I can answer them later. So people are saying hello. Hello also, uh, I really don't like the video because it's super madilim, but I don't have any other choice. I'm just opening a Google tab here, ba? Tapos, it's the, the background of the Google is white, so that's why you can see like white shining on me. But anyway, there's that. Alrighty, so we have here, um, we have here something that I'd like to share to you. So if you are in my email list, If you are receiving emails from me, that means you have already seen this testimonial from one of our mentees. But again, I'm just going to show this to you because this is one of the greatest examples that we have 
when it comes to money mindset. I mean, there are a lot of mentees in the academy that are super successful already. Our very recent income report was from a mentee named Lee. That's not her true name, <laughs> but I'm just putting it out there. She earned 160,000 pesos this month for, I think, I'm not sure if it's social media management, but she does a little bit of that mixed with other things. So that's what she does. And she just earned 160,000 pesos this month. So my highest record when it comes to income, my highest income report that I've ever recorded so far is 180,000 pesos. But Lee was able to break 160. Sabi ko nga sa kanya, sabi ko, 20K na lang. <laughs> 20K na lang you'll be able to break my record. So I was, I was super happy talking to her about it. But this one, uh, I'm showing this mentee's results to you because it's very easy to attain. And I'm super proud of this woman because she. I've been connecting with her ever since. She's one of the, the mentees that I have from way back, Batch Alpha. So Batch Alpha was the very first enrollment that we had. And um, when I was talking to her, she was like super excited about it. And back in the day, the way I the way I remember it was she was a virtual assistant for beach body coaches. And now she's transitioning to like full time freelance, really, and serving the clients that need her help. So this is one of her testimonials. Let me open my screen. Okay, so this is from Sophia. She, she said, I'm so excited. My bagua Hong client for social media management, $25 per hour, five days a week. She also said, imagine from $5 in no May 9, 2019, ngayon I'm charging $24 per hour. Tapos may nag-agree. So I don't think she actually understood that there would be people who will be okay with $24 per hour for what she is doing. And now she was able to do that exactly, right? So from $5 per hour, naging $24 per hour. And you can see here, it's not even as soon as possible that she was able to do this, okay? So the reason why it's her testimonial that I'm showing to you is because hindi siya masyadong intimidating. There are also other testimonials now out of this world now, like the 160K that we had. And I don't want to show it to you as of this moment because you might be intimidated and be like, oh my God, like, ang laki na niyan, like, parang hindi ko na yan kaya, or things like that. So with Sophia, she was able to do this gradually. So May 2019, so how many months is that already? May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. So it took her like nine months or 10 months to be able to charge $24 per hour, which is fine because she was really working hard on it also. So it's not like it's going to happen to you overnight. Same thing with me. It did not happen to me overnight. Right. So when I was starting out back in 2017, my first hourly charge was 15 per hour. That was because I already had an experience with charging per project rates. So I was looking for a freelance career that is more stable. So I can um, I combine per hour and per project rates. So I was able to make single 15 per hour. So with her, she uh, took her 10 months to reach $24 per hour. But... This is another one from her. She said, like, I think the interval of this chat is only like one week. So first week, she told me, oh, I got $24 per hour. And then later on, she also, she also, um, what do you call this? She also was able to close $600. That was one week lang daw. And she only spent one to two hours a day lang for it. So it's super amazing that she was able to do that. $600, no? For one to two hours per day. So sa isang week, there are seven days and two hours lang. So 30K, imagine that $600 per hour, 30K, three, 30K. So 30,000 pesos in one week. So um, 30K sa akin before when I was still a teacher was one one month and a half 
na sweldo ko yan noon, nung teacher ako, that is 30K, because I received, what, 20K, 2021K for every month. So that's one and a half month of my sweldo <laughs> back in the day. So it's super amazing. By the way, hi, ways. Sophia is dot... Uh, Sophia is not a, what do you call this? Like, she's one of our youngest mentees. So if you do not know, she's a col- She's in college right now. Okay? So she's in college right now, and I'm not sure what's, what's happening in her life right now, but a um, couple years, couple years, couple months ago, she told me that she was uh, kind of torn, if she wants to, to pursue college or not, because right now she's already earning like a ton of money. So it's like, <laughs> she's like com- complete torn na ba kung, kung gusto niya pang mag in college or not. Kasi she's already earning a lot. Imagine if you're earning like 100K every month and hindi ka pa nakapagtapos ng college. So would you rather like go to college still or what? Would you just continue working? So it's super amazing of a story. I would always applaud her for that. And she's actually watching with us today. I just saw her comment. <laughs> All right. So there's that. That's one of our um, testimonials in inside Create and Rise Academy. There's so much more. But uh, I don't want to show to you a lot of testimonials where to the point that you would start to get intimidated. Because there are really success stories that are like out of this world. Like, my God, like, para mo ginawa yun, you know, so on and so forth. So there's that, All right? So the reason why I showed you her testimonial is because you could see the gradual shift in there. So from $5 per hour to $24 per hour to $600, right, to $600. So it's insane that there's, like, a shift of pricing there. Tapos ang lalaki ng interval, di ba? So there are there's so that's there's such a big interval when it comes to pricing sa mga ginawa ni Sophia. And what that specifically shows is the change of a person's mindset. So what am I talking about here? Um there are people, diba? There are people that think that would think that 1 million pesos is not that much. Let's say Siguro yung mga may-ari ng SM. <laughs> so mga may-ari ng SM, diba? Like, one million is, that's fine. Like, wala lang yan. Kasi nga, the real estate right now, there are condo units in Cebu City can go from 3 million to 5 million tapos studio unit lang. That means 22 square meters. So, medyo wala lang yung 1 million mo, diba? So, it's, it's very different for each person. Okay. Meron din naman mga tao na, for example, I saw this, I'm not judging anyone, ha? this is just a concrete example and kayo na bahala yung, mag, yung mag-deconstruct ng situation and the idea. But uh, when I was still living in near the airport in Cebu, I used to ride a jeepney like almost every day, not even every day, but like every Tuesday to go to my Toastmasters meeting. Uh, Toastmasters is like this club where you refine your speaking skills and all that kind of thing. So, nung sumasakay pa ako ng jeep back in the day, I had, I was able to ride together with this woman. She's an old woman. And um, the driver was not able to return to her two pesos and change. So, nagbigay siya ng 10 pesos, tapos siguro baka busy na masyado si kuya driver sa pagdadrive ng jeep hindi niya na isauling agad yung 2 pesos. So, ang nangyari, nung pababa na si ate, nagalit siya. Kasi daw, bakit daw hindi pinaro, prin, uh, pinrioritize ni kuya yung sukli niyang 2 pesos? Tapos, ginawa niya kind of like big deal ba? So, ginawa niyang big deal yung 2 pesos. Sabi niya, uh, wala ka na mga, no, wala kang respeto sa oras ng mga tao, ganito, ganyan. Like, alam mong, alam mong, ano, alam mong, sa stop ako dun sa may ganito, tapos, alam mong malapit na dun, tapos hindi mo pa binigay sa akin yung 2 pesos na sukli ko, ganyan, like, ginawa niya talagang big deal yung 2 pesos. Tapos, para sa akin, po, 
kung ako lang, nung back in the day when I was still not really earning that much, to me, 2 pesos is also a lot. Pero yung bang hindi na sana ginawang big deal, siguro nga, oo, 2 pesos is very important for others and 2 pesos goes a long way, di ba? Pero yun nga po, bina- ginawa niyang big deal, di ba? Tapos naawa pa ako kay Kuya Driver kasi yun nga kailangan niya talagang ma-remember kung sino yung mga hindi pa nasuklian, yun, yun, yun. Tapos, hindi naman siya easy kasi nagdadrive ka ng jeep tapos kailangan mo pa masuklian yung person. So, hindi talaga siya easy na job ba? Tapos, ginawa pang big deal. So, yun nga, 2 pesos is something that might be very big for you, but to other people, it's also, what? It's also very small. It's like pocket change na tinatapong na lang or something, right? So it's very different for every person. Now, what does this mean? It means money is subjective. So what might be cheap to you might not be cheap to your client. So you think when you're trying to price yourself or when you're trying to close a deal, or you're talking to a client, or you're talking to a prospect, we call it a prospect, or we haven't closed the deal yet. So when you're when we're talking to a prospect, we're thinking na, ah, five dollars five, uh, $5 per hour lang into charge ko kasi affordable, cheap, tapos mag okay ka agad si client. Tapos, we're always thinking about what's affordable to us. Right? Again, we are thinking of what is affordable for us. Tapos, nawawala na, we're not even taking into account that we actually have expenses like internet connection. Tapos, kung inutang mo pa yung laptop mo sa home credit, even more, you have to also account for that. You also need to account for your electricity bills. Kada gamit mo ng laptop mo, kailangan mo i-charge. Tapos, babayad ka rin yan, di ba? So, you have to also account for that. Right? Pero, kapag nape-pressure na tayo, we are in this moment where we really need to close the deal. Like, naka-face-to-face na natin si client or si prospect. We're like super pressured. May like, ano ba gawin ka, Lord? Bakit ganito? Kailangan nila. Ay, ano ba yung affordable? Ah, sige, $5 per hour na lang. Go. Mm, tapos nawawala ka agad yung mga things na kailangan mo palang i-consider when you are pricing yourself as a freelancer or as a skill-based service provider. Okay? Nawawala lahat sa isip mo. internet, mga ganun, wala na yan. Diba? You always think, ano ba yung affordable? Right? So, affordable for you. Baka, baka para sa'yo affordable. Pero para kay client, wala lang yan. Loose change lang yung $5 per hour. Tapos, yung $5 per hour mo, that's because you were thinking what's of what's affordable for you instead of thinking, what is something that would make my life better and easier and more comfortable, right? So, hindi natin yun iniisip, right? Bakit kaya? It's because we are so afraid that some people might call us greedy. Okay, so sometimes nga nagiging excuse na yan eh. Like, we are just very attached to the client that we are currently talking with. Yung para bang, hala, dapat, dapat talaga mapa-oo ko si client. So, dapat $5 per hour lang sisingin ko kay client kasi dapat mapa-oo ko talaga si client. Yung bang thinking na parang hindi ka na makakita ng client tomorrow. Remember, there is 7 billion people in the world and you only need 20 or 30 clients to work with to really have a stable income. 20 to 30 lang. Yun lang yun. Right? Out of 7 billion people in the world who could probably work with you, 20 to 30 tao lang sa, sa buong mundo, especially with the power of the internet, it's not very hard for you to do that because social media... Diba? You can connect with other people through social media nowadays. It's very easy. Right? So imagine, ano lang, ilang porsyento ba ng 7 billion ang 20 na tao? Baka 0.000001. Hindi <laughs> ako magaling sa math. Pero, yung point ba is, 
napaka maliit na porsyento lang ng 7 billion people na tao yung kailangan mong i-close or yung kailangan mong kausapin. Pero eto ka, super attached ka to this client that you are currently talking with that you really need to make sure na affordable ka lang at saka, um, yun nga, affordable ka lang na mapapao mo agad si client. But, when you are actually someone that's good and you're confident about what you can offer to your client, kahit pa siguro you go with $30 per hour. Like, I mean, imagine, Sophia, $24 per hour. Napaka-easy lang, diba? $24 per hour ako, client, take me or leave me. Diba? So, it's very different for each person. What is $24, $24 for you might be super big na kasi 1K na yan dito sa atin sa Pilipinas, diba? Like, 1K something something. Pero kay client, $20, meron silang ano, meron silang bill sa US na $20. Tapos, ginagamit lang yan nila para, ano, like for example, baka drive, drive para Uber or Grab or baka, you know, kain sa labas, ganito ganyan, baka snacks lang yung $20. So, yun nga, hindi siya, hindi iba 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 yung currency natin and it's also very different when you are actually using the money in itself so it's because of course we are in a third world country and then they're in they're in a first world country so like money is really subjective so what may be cheap and affordable for you right or what may be Sorry, it's vice versa. What may be very expensive to you and not affordable is very cheap and affordable and it is a no-brainer for your client. So, you'll never know. Now, hindi naman sa sinasabi ko po na you have to be very greedy kasi when you are pricing your services, you also need to do price matching, right? So, what do I mean by price matching? When you are a beginner, it's very hard. It's not even hard. Because I have, I have mentees. Ito ha. <laughs> Natatawa ako kasi. I have mentees even that are newbies. And they are able to charge, what, $24 per hour, $150 for two to three hours of project. Yung mga ganun ba? So, Ako nga, hindi na nga ako makaano, hindi na ako, nahihirapan na ako magduro kasi nga, my mentees are breaking my limiting beliefs every single day. So, sasabihin ko sana kanina, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say that when you are a newbie, you're going to have a hard time charging high, which is again, a limiting belief. So, para siguro sa akin, nung newbie ako, nahihirapan talaga ako mag-charge ng malaki, kaya nga, Yun nga, hindi ako naka-charge ng malaki. But here are some mentees that are really able to close deals at the higher rate even though they're still a beginner. So yun siya ba? Parang, it's, it really matters on how you present yourself. Nakikita ni client yan eh. Even if you're just emailing, there are words that, that can, what, that can make, that can let your client know that you are actually not confident. Say, for example, I think. Mm. So, when you are trying to close a deal or when you're trying writing an email to a client and then you're saying, like, um, I think it's okay if we do this and I think it's fine. Like, you're not sure. When you are a freelancer, you're supposed to be your business owner. You are your own boss. Don't use the words, I think. Right? So you really say, oh, it's like this. Like, I charge $24 per hour. This is the 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 hours that I want to work with. Right? So th- this is the only available hours of me in the day. If you need more questions, then we can jump on a call. Here's what we're going to do. You know, you set your own standards. Because you're the business owner. You are supposed to be your own boss. So that should be what that should come easy for you so what you ma i think or i'm not really sure if i'm good in english so i'm not sure if i'll be able to jump on a call with you instead of really like going sure jump on a call what time 
So what time would be available for you? Yung bang nakikita ni client, even though nasa, nagsusulat ka lang ng emails, they would know exactly if you are not confident or not. And when you are not confident, nasisense nila yan, so they, they start to doubt if you really know what you're doing. They'd start to doubt if they you really understand what you're supposed to do as a business owner. Because they also they also screen you, of course. Makikipagtrabaho ka ba sa, sa tao na hindi nila sure kung ano yung ginagawa nila, which is actually common sa ating bansa. <laughs> it's funny because I was supposed to print something yesterday and this is... Um, I was supposed to print something yesterday in a mall and they're a huge print shop, okay? So they really print like tarpaulin and brochures and magazines and I went to that mall hoping that I could get that stuff printed before I leave today. So that was yesterday. And then I went to that printing shop and I said, uh, Miss, do you have this? Sabi ng babae, sabi niya, Ma? parang wala po kaming ganyan. And at the back of my head, sabi ko, parang? Hindi, hindi mo sure? Hindi, hindi, hindi mo sure kung, kung meron kayong ganyan na product in your very own company where you are working? So, yun nga, lumipat ako ng ibang printing shop kasi sabi niya, parang wala kaming ganyan. Parang hindi siya sure ba? So, a person would not want to work with you if you are not sure with yourself nakikita talaga yun ng clients. So, you really need to make sure that when you are trying to, when you're trying, when you are talking to them, you what you really tell them honestly that I cannot do this because this is this. So, hindi, hindi pwede yung I'm not sure, hindi pwede yung I think, di ba? Kasi it really puts you in a position where you don't, peep, the client would think that you're not knowledgeable about the service that you're going to provide okay so another example so if you are messaging the facebook page or emailing us um, the one that we have in our customer service is shem so um, shem is shem is one of our best people in the team and all of them are bests. <laughs> so, so the reason why I hired Shem is because when she wrote her email, binasa ko lang email, hindi, hindi pa kami nagkausap ni Shem before I hired her. Nagkausap lang kami ni Shem nung na-hire ko na siya as customer service person. So this is what happened. Um, I posted to the mentees group because I'm very comfortable with hiring my very own students. Kasi nga, uh, I know who they are, and I know I've seen them before, so I've talked to them before, so it's it's very comfortable for me to hire my very own students. So I posted in our private group, in our mentees group, and I asked if anyone was interested in customer service support, blah, blah, blah. Tapos, I asked them to write an email, diba? So I asked them to write an email, why would you be suitable for the job? so on and so forth, and how much are you going to charge me? So, so ito nga, because I'm their mentor, then they started becoming, what, parang maraming nagsulat ng emails na very unsure, or I think, or they did not even put their very own rates in the email kasi na-intimidate sila kasi nga mentor ako nila. So, it was very hard to find someone now very comfortable to talk about their rates. Okay? So, for me, I, I really eyed on Sheila or Sham because she was very comfortable in the email. She just said, oh, this is what I've done in the past. Trabaho ako sa ganito ganyan. And I really had an experience with customer service. So, parang confident ba? And what the plus point was, She's very jolly and funny in the email. And my my boyfriend and I was laughing because we were, we were reading the email and we were like, napaka ano niya, napaka very funny and jolly. And I wanted that, that person, that very specific person, that customer service person that we're going to have to be funny and jolly because that's who I am. And I want that person to have 
the same personality when they're talking to the people that are contacting the page. So that. And then she was also very comfortable with talking about her rate. So she just said, Ray, call on, this is my rate. And then that with, with, with the wink emoji. <laughs> so it was very fun. And you know, when you are comfortable in presenting yourself to the people that you are talking to, then they are start to trust, they will start to trust you because they know exactly that you know what you are talking about. Kung, for example, ako nag live video ako dito, tapos gagan ng ganun ako. Um, um, I think that we're going to talk about how to charge high today. Would you like that? Can you write in the comment section if if you want to talk about that today? Because I'm not very sure. Eh. Ah, chirot. Parang konyo, ah. <laughs> I'm not very sure. Eh. <laughs> so, but you get the point, the right? If I'm very in, I'm not. If I'm, if I wasn't confident enough to talk to you here, and I wasn't very confident about the topic that I'm going to talk about, I don't think you would actually listen to me, the right? So that's what we're going, that's what we're talking about. So aside from the money mindset factor, when you really are trying to close deals to your prospects or your future clients, make sure that they know exactly who you are and what you can do. Okay? So balik tayo dun sa money mindset matter. Kasi that is really the core of our message today. Before I start answering questions, remember this. Remember this, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you a story, by the way. <laughs> so, so um, back in the day, when I was, sorry, I was um, because Back in the day, when I was still starting out, yung bang kakaresign ko lang sa teaching job ko, I used to crample money. Wala akong sample, no? Sanali. Baka lang, sample pa tayo. So, kunwari, pera to. Uh, tissue lang po ito. Uh, so, kunwari pera to. Um, when I buy something from the mall or in the sari-sari store, sa tiyangge, gano'n, gano'n, because I, I bring my money with me. Do you know what I do with my money? I do this. Ganito ako makawak ng pera. As in, literally, ha? Ganito ako makawak ng pera. Kinakrample ko yung money. As in, parang galit na galit sa pera ba? Gano'n. Tapos, one day, nakita ako ng boyfriend ko. So, ano yung kinagawa mo? Bakit, bakit kinagawa mo? Bakit, bakit parang gusto mong itapon yung pera? Bakit parang galit na galit ka sa pera niya? Sabi niya. Tapos sabi ko, ano oh, galit? Like, what are you trying to say? Like, hindi naman, wala namang meaning yun. Gusto ko lang talang, gusto ko lang talang i-crumple yung pera. Yun ang sabi ko. Tapos sabi niya, do you know that that has a meaning in psychology? That when you, crample money or when you do things to things that reflects anger that means you don't have a lot of it and you hit people that does not that has it so what does that mean pinapakita ko daw doon doon sa mannerism na yon that i'm angry to people that has money kasi kinakrample ko ganun Parang galit na galit ako sa pera, di ba? Tapos, it actually made sense to me. Kasi nga, galit ako sa pera kasi wala akong pera. just ko. Hindi nga ako makakain. Di ba? That was like three years ago. Galit na galit talaga ako sa pera at that time. So, it made sense to me that there was actually a psychology behind things. Yun nga, there are also people who are, what, torturing dogs and cats. Because they might had a trauma back in the day about dogs and cats. That's why they're torturing those things. Or they actually have um, trauma behind love and care. That's why when they see things that are adorable and are cute, they just want to ruin it. Diba? So, yun, psychology yun. So, balik tayo dun sa pera. Kasi yun nga yung, <laughs> yun nga yung, ano, yun nga yung core message natin today. So, yun nga, hinakrapo ko yung pera. Tapos, nag-make sense sa akin yung sinabi niya na I'm very angry with people who has money. So, three years ago, just ko, 
pumunta ako ng Ayala in Cebu. May, siyempre, may Ayala sa Cebu, no? <laughs> so, pumunta ako ng Ayala na Cebu. Naiirita ako sa lahat ng mga, ano, mayayaman. Yung bang, yung bang mga may bag, na gano'n ka mga lalakad sa mall na parang ganyan. Kasi naman talaga, maraya, mayaman sila. So, every time nakakita ako ng person na gano'n maglakad with my hand, with handbag, na gano'n, 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 naiirita ako. Tapos sinasabihan ko sila ng bad words. So, if kasama ko yung friend ko or whoever is my kasama that day, sinasabihan ko, tingnan mo yan, no? para ano, ang feeling. Mm, diba? So, parang galit. I wasn't very aware that I was actually angry with people who has money. So, lahat ng tao na kakilala ko na mayaman, hmm, so, parang galit talaga ako sa kanila. Hindi man parang, pero galit talaga ako sa mga tao may pera. Kasi nga, at the back of my head, bakit ang unfair? Ako, wala akong pera. Hindi nga ako makakain. Tapos, kayo, ang yaman nyo. Bakit ganun? Oh, so, that was my reaction back in the day. That was three years ago, ba? Diba? So, ang resulta, I was actually shooing away money. So, the very thing that I need, I was shooing it away and I'm what I'm not sure if you're familiar with everything in our world regardless if it's a living or a non-living thing has an energy okay so this is not what this is not hippie whatever spiritual thing this is not spiritual this is science okay so this is called neuroscience and Electro, churva, eklabush. Basta na. Hindi, hindi ko nasasabihin yung term. Napapayala ko eh. <laughs> so, yun niya. So, my energy, lahat, ng, lahat na nakapalibot sa atin. And, uh, yun niya, I was showing away the very energy that I needed in my life. So, in result, I was not able to get clients. Diba? Yung mga nag-reach out sa akin na clients, lagi nila akong hinahagal kasi sila din, wala din silang pera. Kasi nga, ayoko sa mga mayayaman. Diba? Ayoko sa mga mayayaman. Like, ew! Ganun. <laughs> Ganun, diba? Tindi ni ate. <laughs> Tapos, yun nga, ayoko sa mayayaman and things like that. So, my money mindset back in the day was so, so bad that every time I talk about this, I cringe. Because it doesn't sound like me today. So, yun nga, hindi ako nakakuha ng mga clients, so on and so forth. Tapos, noong time na yun, na kinausap ko ng boyfriend ko about being angry with people who has money, he explained to me na fair naman talaga ang world. So, fair naman talaga si God kung naniniwala kayo sa Diyos, no? Fair naman talaga si God or fair naman talaga ang world. Kasi, yung mga hardworking, yung mga hardworking, at saka yung mga nagsosolve talaga ng problems ng ibang tao, If you are a person who are solving other people's problems, then of course you get paid for it. Diba? Um, one example, Elon Musk. Elon Musk, person with Tesla, SpaceX, you know, things like that. PayPal, do you know that Elon Musk was the owner of PayPal like two to three years, five years ago? And he created PayPal because he did not find any payment gateway online. So, pa kung gusto kong magbumili ng something sa sa online, paano ko ito babayaran? Gusto, gusto kong may payment gateway. So like, si Elon Musk sabi niya, oh sige, gagawa ako ng software, wala naman pala kayong ano eh. <laughs> wala naman pala kayong ano, kwenta. Charot. Gagawa ako ng payment gateway. So that's why we have PayPal now. ba diba? Nag-solve siya ng solusyon ng, ng mga tao. So that's why he has a lot of money. He got paid for it. And then the very one that he is working right now is Tesla, which is what the Earth needs. Basically, we don't want more cars that emit really bad smoke or bad, yeah, bad smoke. So now, solar panel cars, not electric cars, diba? Charge mo lang yung car mo doon sa yung parang Tesla charging point, yung parang ATM machine, <laughs> diba? Charge mo na lang yung car mo para hindi na mag-emit ng 
um, yun nga, bad smoke yung other cars. So, he is solving problems for other people and it is only right for him to get paid. That is why he is rich. Okay? Same thing with Bill Gates. Kaya mayaman si Bill Gates kasi paano tayo magkakaroon ng... <laughs> Hindi naman siya ang nag, nag-invent ng computer, no? But back in the day, nung mahal pa masyado yung computer, wala talagang nakapag-invent ng computer na affordable for every, what, for every home around the world. So, that was Bill Gates' vision was for every home to have a computer. And that's why he created what? Microsoft. Kasi nga, si Apple, Steve Jobs. nag apple naman ako ngayon, no? Hindi naman ako Microsoft person, pero ba? <laughs> Yun nga. Kasi nga, yung Apple daw back in the day is very mahal. Tapos, hindi siya user-friendly. So, yun yung gustong ipalabas ni Bill Gates that he wanted to really have, um, he wanted to have computers for every home. So, yun yung sinolve niya na problem. So, my point here is, if you're solving other people's problems, it's only very fair that you get paid for it and then you get rich by it because you are solving other people's problems. That is why when you are a freelancer or when you have a client, you are solving their problems and you get paid for it. And it's only right that you get rich by it. Okay? So, yun nga. So, when you are, when you currently have whatever income you have right now, think if you are solving enough problems for enough amount of people. Okay? So, nung teacher ako, meron akong na-solve na problems. <laughs> diba? Meron akong na-solve na problems, syempre. So, nagtuturo ako sa mga bata kasi yun yung problema nila. Kailangan nilang matuto. But, the problem was, I was stuck in the four corners of my classroom. So, hindi malaki yung coverage ko and i wasn't earning that much because it only makes sense i'm only i'm only teaching what 25 students in the morning 18 in the afternoon so that only makes sense for me to get paid how much i was worth but when you are solving problems to more people or more valuable problems for other people right so that's when you get rich by it okay so, yun nga, you change, when you change your money mindset, when you change the way you think about money, everything around you is going to change. So now, balik tayo sa pera na, na kinrumple ko. Charot. So, hindi na ako nagkakrumple ng pera ngayon. Ayaw ko ipakita yung wallet ko, syempre. Pero, <laughs> ano ba yan? Oh, uh, so yes. So, pero, uh, ganito na ginagawa ko sa pera ko. So, if if I have, for example, 100 peso bills, I do them like this. Sige. Diba? Ganito ang bill, diba? Pa- parang landscape siya. Tapos, pinipilo ko ng ganyan. Oh, diba? Tapos, yun yung ipapasok ko sa, sa wallet ko. So, I don't crumple money anymore. And I make sure that they are flattened and they are being taken care of. Kasi nga, Nag-change na yung money mindset ko. So, I don't make bad words about people that are rich anymore because I understand that they must be solving other people's problems really, really well. And that's why they are rich. Okay? Alright, sige na. Mag-answer na tayo ng question. Okay? Alright, sige na, mag-answer na tayo ng question. If you have questions and clarifications, let me know in the comment section and I will answer them. Sige daw. Um, okay. Len Dai is asking, I don't have any experience about freelance. Can you help me po? Iko din sure anong skills meron ako para sa freelance. So this one, this comment and this question cannot be answered very easily in one minute. So, Len, I suggest that you go to the pin post of the Facebook page. So, my pin post on Facebook page yan, yung merong orange na tag sa kilid. So, that's our pin post in the page. And there are a lot of things that you can follow there and a lot of questions that are answered because these are like the most basic ones that we get. We already answered them for you in advance and all you have to do is help yourself in reading it. 
and follow the instructions that is being said there and you will, ab you will be able to solve your problem or you'll be able to find answers to your questions. Okay, alrighty. Um, how to deal with imposter syndrome, sabi ni Janelle Tamayo from Batch Delta. Okay, how to deal with imposter syndrome? Sina diba? Ano ba ko imposter syndrome? Charat! Meron o eh. Ano ba ko imposter syndrome? Meron, syempre meron ako imposter syndrome. Kaloka naman para ng mga ito. I'm fee! I'm fee. Um, how, I, I can't speak for other people, no? But how I deal with my imposter syndrome, I just really, do you call this? I really ask myself, if 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 it's just me judging myself, diba? So when I'm ito ha, lagyan ko ng concrete example para mas 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 uh, mas mag make sense. So right now I'm doing digital drawing. Um, follow me at Instagram, Demi Creative Strat. Oh, diba? Promote. <laughs> so meron akong Instagram where I really create art. Um, and right now I'm really struggling with Drawing a person. So, I can draw objects and other things. Pero pag sa tao na, hindi ko na alam yung gagawin ko. Diba? <laughs> but I've been doing art for a very long time. Ever since I was nine. I've just never really touched into drawing humans. That's why I'm not really good at it. And sometimes, I really tell myself, I said, Bakit ganun? Bakit... You know, your experience by your years of doing art and you still don't know how to draw a person. So, sabi ko sa ilo, bakit hindi ako marunong? Siguro, maybe I should just try drawing other things. Kasi, wala din naman, wala din naman, ano eh, wala din naman gamit eh. So, wala din naman silbe kung mag, mag-study pa ako on how to draw a person if hindi ko naman siya gagamitin. So, okay lang yun. Diba? So, para bang sinasabotahe ko yung sarili ko na wag na lang mag-practice on drawing a human because wala naman, hindi naman ako magaling doon. Diba? So, the way I deal with that is I sleep on it. Very first thing that I do is I sleep on it. It's, oh, tsaka, same thing, no? Very effective when you are trying to make the bid of your money. Like, if you want to buy something, sleep on it first. So, really sleep on it. Because <laughs> sometimes we are just overwhelmed with our emotions, but so the next day it's gonna be fine. So that's what I do when I have imposter syndromes or when I want to really buy something, I sleep on it, and then the next day I decide. So when I have an imposter syndrome, I sleep on it. The next day, if it's still happening, because sometimes everything can be solved by sleep. I love sleep. <laughs> I love sleep. no. I love sleep so much. Everything can be solved by sleep. But, so for example, the next day, I'm still feeling the same exact way. I tell myself things or I celebrate the things that I'm very capable of. So for example, um, there, that's, there's this one morning that I didn't really feel very confident and I felt very insecure kasi talaga tumataba na ako and I have you know, bill bill. So one morning, I woke up and I said, I look very pretty today. So you bang mga affirmations, that's what we call them. So you really tell yourself the things that you, you wanted to hear from yourself. Because the reason why we have imposter syndrome is usually because we are insecure and we don't love ourselves enough. Okay? So we don't, we just don't really love ourselves enough. We use other people for validation. So that's why we usually have imposter syndrome because it's either we did not receive a praise from other people for the past two weeks, three weeks, diba? So walang nagsabi sa'yo maganda ka for the last three weeks or walang nagsabi sa'yo magaling ka for the last two days. That's why you have imposter syndrome. Sometimes, diba? So yan din sa akin. I still have that. I still fight my very own demons every single day. Mukha lang akong perfect. I'm fee. Oh, you know. <laughs> okay, so I hope I answered your question. Okay, so hi Demi, what is the template of your contract? Uh, very easy lang. So the, the template for a contract to answer this very quickly is 
how much are you going to pay me? Great. Terms of payment. What's going to happen if we're going to terminate the project? So I may be keeping, um, will I be keeping all the payment and all the artwork? So on and so forth. So terms of payment, terms of termination, and then project start and end date. So those are like the three core things that needs to be done in a contract. Very easy and simple. Okay, ayon. Um, Lori Lee is asking, what batch po yung naka na? Is it Delta or Echo? Delta po. So Echo is still coming up in April 1 to 4. Yon. Okay. Uh, Jovi is asking, I have an account na sa truelancer.com. Paano po magkaroon ng client since I'm a newbie pa? So Jovi, if you're he if you're new here in the page, we don't really suggest people to depend on freelancing sites because they yeah it's like your business but is depending on the freelancing sites instead of it being dependent on you. So like what am I what am I talking about this? It's when like Upwork suspends your account, edi wala na pang pang mo, di ba? It's also when Upwork doesn't approve your account, so wala ka makikitang client. So that's why what I teach in the academy is really building a brand from scratch, right? So I'm helping other people build a brand from scratch as a freelancer and then get clients from there. So that's why I cannot really speak for truelancer.com or paano makakuha ng client doon, so on and so forth. Kasi nga, uh, we don't do that. Okay? All right. Um... Ansi Valerio, yes, um, Ansi is a mentee, I think. My chance din po ba, for, uh, my chance din po ba for me to get writing projects that would charge higher than the usual if you have newbie and zero experience? Yes, like what I said before, no, I'm saying, <laughs> I, I've been saying this to a lot of people na, it might be hard for you to charge high when you're a newbie. And then there's this men the, the there are these mentees that are able to charge high even though they don't have any experience. So it really depends on the person's again money mindset and confidence. Mitch is asking, do you need to have a website as a freelancer? No po. Um, in our module, since Mitch is, I'm talking to Mitch ha, personally because she's a mentee. In our modules, we have this thing that we call a freelancer media kit, where you need to um, you need to create your very own kind of like PDF form portfolio that you send to your client. The format is in our modules, so that's very easy for us to do. Uh, you don't really need to have a website when you are a freelancer. You just need to be able to show exactly um, your work and what you can do. Okay. Right. Dun -ning, dun -ning. So CJ is asking, where do you guys get your clients from? The results are it are insane. Capital. <laughs> Good on them. So most of us are getting our clients on Facebook groups. Pero yun ya, um, you are in in the academy, you are tasked to really identify who you want to serve, and then you find your clients in the social media platform where they're hanging out. So for example, if you want to target photographers, you will not be able to find them on Facebook groups usually. I mean, there are Facebook groups for photographers, sure, but a lot of them are on Pinterest and on Instagram, right? And then you can start working on them, reaching out to them that way. So it really depends on who your ideal client is and where they are hanging out. Tintin Dakuro Ayon is asking, when will be your next batch? Um, ano po? Um, what do you call this? Um, nakita ba sa? Ah, ganun pala yun. Meron pala siyang effect dito. Oh, nakita yung comment. Sure. Ah, uh, sige. Um, Denise daw. Demi Bernice po. <laughs> Hindi po Denise. Na naalala ko tala yung Denise Cornejo ni Bong Navarro. Hello. <laughs> so, when will be your next batch? Is April po. April 1 to 4. Okay, I already have an account on Upwork, but I don't have any idea on how I work on it. 
um, yun nga po, hindi po kami nagsasuggest ng freelancing sites kasi po nakadepende po on Upwork or in online jobs page yung business nyo po instead of you being in charge of your business. So that's why we cannot speak about that. Alrighty. Um, online writing and marketing, ma'am, can you help us with that? Is there any offer for training? Uh, we don't offer any jobs po inside the academy. We only teach you how to market your skills, work ethics, how to talk to clients, um, how to create, you know, things that would make you a professional freelancer, so on and so forth. But we don't do, um, we don't do a lot of skills. We have a couple skills, but they are super basic just for you to get started. And then you develop your other skills over time, you know. So you nga po, your our core training in the academy really is marketing. Okay. Tananing, tananing. Sheila Marie Grijaldo is asking, my, ch my chance po ba ang hindi high earning skills sa course nyo po? Data, data, data entry or admin? I think Pwede naman po siya, pero yun nga po, with data entry and admin kasi, you are very, sorry for the word ha, pero I'll just put it out there, you are very replaceable po. So that means anyone can, anyone can just randomly pay a person who has no experience with data entry and admin to replace you. So that means you cannot really charge high for that kasi your skill in itself is very replaceable. So, very easy lang siya mapalitan. Very easy ka lang mapalitan. So, yun nga po siya. Yun po yung kaso kapag uh, hindi po siya high earning skill. Okay. Tring, tring. Uh, sa mga nagtatanong po, no, if how can I start, so on and so forth, yung mga ganun, yung mga basic na question, uh, doon na lang po tayo sa Facebook page, ha? The, we have a pin post on the Facebook page where you can really, like, follow instructions. So, after the live video, you can definitely visit that. I have four minutes to answer your question. My goodness. Okay. Del Campo Jo is asking, how about if we already have an existing client which is stable, however, they are charging us slow. How eligible should I be to make my pay high? So, Jo, when you are already working for them for more than six months, more than six months, huh? Very reasonable, man. To really, to really ask your client for a raise. So when you are working with that client for six months or more na, then you can start asking na for a raise. And then um, also, do not be very attached to the outcome. So ang nangyayari kasi when we are asking our old clients to raise our rates, we are so scared na no, to even ask them because they're, sometimes they're super nice to us and we don't want to let them go and things like that. But you are actually eating a lot of your time, diba? So you are eating a lot of your time instead of trying to close deals that are higher. So if you're asking your client if you want a raise, then just let go of the outcome. If the client will say yes, then good for you. If the client is going to say no, then it's okay, right? It's okay. Just find a different client that you can close on the amount that you want. Okay, so just don't be very attached to the outcome. Okay lang yun. There are, again, 7 million people in the world. You only need 10 to 20 clients to really have a, a, a fruitful, lucrative living. So it's completely fine, right? So if you're six months beyond, try asking them already. Walang masama sa pagtatanong. Okay. Right. Okay. Bakit? Ayan. Um, princess is asking, how can I get clients? Okay, so this one is also another of our questions that are answered in the pinned post already. Uh, meron po kaming step-by-step -step process done and a list of videos that you can watch about getting clients. So I've already done a couple live videos where I was talking about like building a brand, getting clients, so on and so forth. So I think there's a lot of videos there already that is uh, usable to you. So for better direction, just go to the pin post of the Facebook page. Mika is asking, how many clients are you currently working with right now so that we can have an idea? So Mika, right now, 
wala akong clients because we are super focused on refining the academy. I, yun nga, I'm very hesitant to even get clients kasi I know very well that my students need me more than my clients do. <laughs> so, ang ginagawa ko is I, if I have work from my old clients and they come to me, um, I call in one of my students to help me with the work. So, I just pay her. I kind of like subcontract one of my students to do the work for me. So, that's what I do now and I don't do the work anymore. So, yeah. But usually in a month, I would get, sometimes I get four clients in a month, so one a week. Sometimes I also get two clients in a month. Two for every two weeks. So it depends on what kind of project it is. If it's a sales funnel project, then usually I get one client every week because it's t- it takes me one a week to finish a sales funnel design. And I don't I don't overbook myself. Yung bang, um, yung bang I have two clients in one week, diba? No. Para na loka na ati. So <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> okay, I hope I answered your question. Will this be available later on for internet connection? Yes, but Mm-mm. so Kate Lopez is asking. My passion is teaching little kids through play. Uh, I know, I know this at the girl. <laughs> Ah, familiar ako nito because of course I'm an education graduate. I was just, I was a teacher before. So can I use it in freelancing? So this one is a in an in person setting. Of course you can't you can't like have children play in the monitor or in the in the screen of your computer and just watch them from there. Diba? You can't do that. So um, if you have freelancing is usually done through digital skills. Of course, there are also like freelance videographers and freelance photographers where they really need to be on site. But a lot of the digital, a lot of the skills in freelancing are all digital. So you need to find something that you can do digitally. Okay, so I hope I answered that question. Marilyn Navarro is asking, do you have email marketing course inside CRA? Wala po kaming email marketing course. Um, I that's not actually my forte so my forte really is design um, that, and of course speaking so that's those are like the skills that I'm eyeing on and creating in the academy all right okay ta-ding, ta-ding, ta-ding. Ayon. okay Ayong dami yung mga question. Nakaka one hour in na po tayo. Okay, sige po. Um, because we have already had one hour in in this live video, I'm afraid to say we really need to stop. Ta-da! Uh, mag-break muna tayo. Eh! Ah! Okay. <laughs> uh, yun nga. Uh, we are going to continue it again next Monday. So next Monday, puro po tayo question. Okay, Q&A tayo next week. As usual, I alternate trainings and then Q&A and then trainings and then Q&A every single week. So because this week we had live training, next week we're going to do Q&A. Okay, alrighty. So I am going to say thank you so much for spending your time with me tonight. Thank you so much, Po, uh, for those questions that I wasn't able to answer very sorry, but you can come back naman po next week, Monday, 7 p.m. pa rin on our Facebook page so that you can um, have your questions answered live, okay? So, yun nga po, if you have questions, type, type nyo na agad. <laughs> wag na, wag na mag-wait until later. So, type nyo na agad yung kung ano yung question nyo so I can answer them right away, okay? Alrighty, so yun nga po, bye-bye, and I will see you on Monday next week, okay? Uh, be posted on the Facebook page. Tomorrow is the start of the three-week countdown of the open enrollment of Create and Rise Academy. So tomorrow, it'll be three weeks left until we open Create and Rise Academy again. And by the way, if you're still watching, we will not be opening Create and Rise Academy again 
for the next six months. So if you want to enroll, enroll na kayo on April 1 to 4 because we will not be opening Create and Rise Academy again for six months because we have other things planned, right? Especially for the mentees. So please, um, if you want to enroll, do that by then. Okay? Alrighty. So I'll see you next week. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.